A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you seven really simple Lightroom tips that I wish I had known earlier. Everybody, fantastic to see you all again. I've not done a Lightroom video for a while, um, and I was actually editing a, a photo from Iceland, and I was just doing a few things on it. I was thinking, do you know what? I didn't know these things about six or seven years ago, and they've really made a big difference. Now I sort of take them for granted, but they've really changed how I edit my photos. So I wanted to go through some images and give you some examples of how these things have changed. Now they're really simple things. They're not super complicated, um, but some of them, even if you're pretty advanced, you might not know about or you might not have tried. So stick with it um, because there's some really good ones towards the end of the video as well. The other thing I'd say is if you like it, give it a thumbs up because it massively helps me in the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's get into them. The first one, which is just understanding your image and the luminosity, brightness levels, the shadows and the highlights of your image. It's really simple this, really obvious, but it's amazing how many people probably don't do this before they start editing. So we've got an image like this one here and not done anything to it. You can look at the histogram, it looks pretty good, but, um, the first thing I do on every image is I, I take the exposure slider and I just dial it all the way back, all the way, and then I think, okay, well, what is in the clouds? I've got all the detail there. Um, you know, there's some really nice detail in the clouds here, um, some nice detail on the horizon there. So that's really great. And if I just go back, you, you can't see that quite as much. You obviously can't see any of that. It looks burnt out. And then I take it the other way and I dial it all the way up and then I go in and have a look, and you can see again, you know, this just looks really dark, but just by dialing it up, I can think, well, it still needs to stay dark, this, but I can pull out some of the shadow detail, so I can, I can pull out some more contrast, probably, in this area, which will be really good. Um, and then you can see that I don't want to burn out this wall by dialing it up too much. You know, this is, this is a wall that's got a lot of detail in it all the way along, so I've got to be careful of that. Um, you know, it's, that's pretty much exposed correctly. But there's a lot of information that can be pulled out of the highlights of the shadows in, in this photo. But if I take another photo, for instance, this one here, which was the one that I was editing when I was thinking about this, this, this image here is, is one of three, actually, and I, I'm going to talk about that in one of the later tips. But this is um, one that I exposed for the highlights, and you can see that the highlights are pretty good. Uh, it's a drone shot, so you're never gonna get quite as much detail or dynamic range out of a drone shot. Um, but looking at the histogram, it's pushed to either side of it. When I go to the shadow area on this image, and you can see I've only just got the highlight detail, so when I go to the shadow detail and bring that up, you can see that there's a huge amount of noise in this image. And that's an issue. You know, I need to be careful about that. I need to know about that. I need to be careful about what I pull out of that. I need to potentially do some noise reduction to it. So by just moving this exposure slider left and right, I found out quite a lot of information about both these images. And that helps when I get into the editing process. Um, we'll come back to this image because I'm going to show you a trick um, that you may or may not know to, to how to improve this image. Okay, number two is all about contrast. So how much do you think you know about contrast? So we probably all know that contrast increases the difference between the light and the um, shadow tones. So you can see if you look at this histogram as they increase the contrast, the highlights are getting further to the right and the shadows are getting further to the left. But the other thing that you might not know is that contrast also increases saturation. So you can see on this image a little bit, especially in, in this area here, if I increase the contrast, you can see that the oranges are just getting more saturated. But if I just incre increase contrast globally on this image, you can see that, you know, it's not great, is it? You know, we don't want to increase contrast across the whole image. We actually, when we're messing around with this contrast slider, we can see that actually, we probably want to increase contrast in this area here, but we probably, don't want to increase it so much in this area here, or we want to increase it in a slightly different way in this area here. So what, what's called um, shadow contrast rather than just global contrast. 
So a top tip for this is just use some of these tools up here. And these tools allow you to do local adjustments. And I've got a video on it and I'll link it here um, all about using local adjustments. In fact, I think I've got two videos on it. So I'll link one of them here um, and you can go and have a look at that in more detail. But this is just um, a radial adjustment here. And what I could do is I could just really crudely place it here so you can see it's affecting this area only. What I could do is I could just just increase the contrast in this area here and maybe some add some whites a bit just to bring it out a little bit and you can see that maybe just make it a little bit warmer as well so you can see just by using contrast and a little bit of warmth and um, increasing the brightness then i've gone from before here to this here so i've just increased the contrast and the saturation in this area here. And that is a good way of using contrast. So first of all, understand contrast and what it does. It increases saturation as well as the difference between the highlights and the shadows, but also understand that contrast probably shouldn't be applied to the whole image. Um, it probably should be applied to selected areas. But you can see that just by increasing contrast in two areas, but rather than the whole image, already it's starting to improve this image by those local adjustments. Okay, so let's go to this shot here. This is a woodland scene, and this is somewhere where I would use contrast. And the reason I use contrast is that not only do I want to increase the contrast and the separation of the shadows and the highlights, but I also, in this case, want to increase the saturation, but I don't want to do it just by doing that, because you can see that looks pretty horrible. But what I do in this case is I just take the cost contrast slider and just push it to the right because I think it needs a little bit more contrast and you can see that I'm just getting a little bit more depth to those colours as well. And that is the way that I would control not just contrast but saturation in an image like this. The third point is something that I've already talked about which is don't just do things globally um, but do things locally. So the majority of the adjustments that I make to my image are local adjustments. So I might go down the, these sliders here and I might say um, okay, I could probably just pull the highlights in this image back a little bit. Yeah, I definitely want to do that a little bit. Um, okay, I could increase the shadows a bit, but then not don't really want to increase the shadows there, so I don't want to do that a huge amount. And um, don't want to change the blacks, and I don't want to change any of that. So, you know, at the end of the day, on this image like this, I probably wouldn't do many of these adjustments here. And what I see all the time is um, photographers changing all these and doing these global adjustments when actually you don't want to do those adjustments to certain parts of the image. Now you could do those adjustments and then go back and um, change them, which is another point I'm gonna talk about. But the best thing to do is just do local adjustments like I've done to the sky and here. So for instance, this area here, we know there's detail to be brought out. It'd be a perfect place to do a local adjustment. So again, I just put a radial filter there and we could probably just increase the brightness of it a little bit. Um, Actually, we probably just decrease the contrast of it and pull some whites out and then maybe just drop those blacks back a little bit. And in this case, we might just wanna add a little bit of clarity. So that's an adjustment I've made here. And you can see now with all these local adjustments, it's starting to look really good and balanced and probably more what the eye saw. But I've not made any major adjustments on the panel on the right hand side. They've all been done by those local adjustments. So that third point is don't think you have to just use those. Think more about local adjustments on your image. And I've done a video on it about local adjustments and I'll link it there. Okay, onto the fourth point, which is <laughs> something that you may or may not know about. And that is when you make something bright or you overexpose something in your image, you can bring it back. So for instance, say this image here, I think actually it does need brightening up. The whole image needs brightening up. So say I do decide that I want to pull, brighten that whole image up. This area here is now burnt out, but it doesn't mean you've lost that information. The raw file in the background is retaining that information. And that's really important to, to, to know. You're never doing any destructive editing. Um, so you can always pull that back 
even if you add clarity and then remove clarity with another filter, that, that would work as well. So for instance, in this case, I might just wanna put a radial filter here. I mean, this is probably gonna look a bit naff, but let's just do it anyway. Um, and I might just say, okay, well, let's, let's just pull this um, information back. And I could do it using the highlight slider or I could just reduce the um, exposure. Let's do it with the highlight slider and you can see quite easily, I probably want to do it sort of over here on this particular case, you can see I've pulled that information back. Now, I actually don't think that looks right on this particular image, and it does need a little bit of care and attention over here. And again, I've done a radial filter video here. Go and have a look at that, and it'll talk more about how I use radial filters when there's a bright part in the image to create a little bit of a glow, um, which is really important in this particular case. Okay, onto the fifth point and back to one of the images we looked at in the first point, and that's all about HDR. HDR is this thing that um, in photography people um, used to associate with really horrible looking images where they made the sky and the land all look the same, luminosity levels and they just looked awful. But actually in photography, creating a high dynamic range is really, really useful, um, especially when you're taking photos with a camera that's maybe older um, or doesn't have as good dynamic range as the modern camera. Obviously on this image here, the, you know, the Nikon Z7's got an amazing dynamic range. So you can see we could pull all that information back. There was no real um, noise in, in the shadows here and the highlights weren't blowing out. But on an image like this, um, then we can see that when you look at the shadows, then it's not so great. And in that case, it's good to take a series of images. And I do this all the time with my drone. It's really clever, the drone. When it hovers, it's so stationary that you can take three shots um, at different exposures and they're perfectly aligned. Um, not perfectly, but they're almost perfectly aligned and then Lightroom does the, the rest of it for you. So if you're in a, a situation, and this is a bit a step before Lightroom, I suppose, um, but really useful to know when you come into Lightroom to have that information. So if you're in a situation where you've got a scene and you think, ah, oh, it's really bright, I'm not sure I'm gonna capture everything, and you're worried about your exposure, then just go um, a stop or two down and a stop or two above and take three shots, or maybe if you're really worried, take five shots um, at different exposure levels, and really, there's no excuse, you can, you can always do that, and you can, that means you can always get the perfect exposure. And what it means is you'll have a much broader dynamic range when you blend them in Lightroom. And I've done that here, so this was um, a stop below, and you can see this was the bright image, and if I go down on this, you can see I've not got any highlight information, but the shadow information, if we look at the shadow, and if we compare it to, let's just do a comparison here, if we compare it to this shadow, and if I just look at that, and then we'll put that one there, we'll zoom in a bit. You can see that this one here, where I've just let a little bit more light into the drone camera, is significantly better in the shadow area than this one here. So that means that when I blend them together as a HDR image, then I'm going to get that shadow detail, I'm going to get the highlight detail, and it's just going to be an amazing image. So it's really easy to do that. If I just reset these, so I'll just reset all the settings on these two. I've got three images here, one in the middle and two at either end. You just right click and then you click photo merge, HDR, and um, don't do auto settings. And then once you've done that, you just click merge and then we get a image like this. So this is the merged uh, HDR image. And you can now see in this image, if I just pull back the highlights, you can actually see, you can see on the histogram here that I'm pulling back all this information from the right hand side. Can you see it's just like re recovering all that information. Whereas on this bright one here, just watch ha what happens. There's just a massive peak here and that's just lost information. There's no information in the highlights past that point. Back onto this HDR one that we've blended I've got all that information there, and then in the shadows, um, if we just zoom in, there's no noise. Um, I've, I've got the shadow information from the brighter image. So I've got the best of both worlds, and that means now that I can go and do a really quick edit on this, you know, drop, drop down the sky, you know, inc this is really quick, don't say how crap this is in the um, comments, but you know, and create a quick edit on that, 
and you can see that that's great. I've got a really fantastic shot there that's really manageable, and all I needed to do was just take those extra two shots, um, and it made a really big difference to what I could do in Lightroom. So think about that. You should always end up with a photo that's got no blown out highlights and no block shadows where you've got noise in those shadows. It's really easy to do just by thinking about taking those three shots. By the way, just on, on this image here, um, let's just zoom in. This, this is the road that comes in. You can see it, and it goes right around here, around the bottom. Them. and I've actually, no, my car's not on here, my car's parked here, but when I went to this place in, in, in the Highlands, I was the first person to go down this road, there was like marker posts where you meant to go, which was, quite, <laughs> which was quite scary, there's nobody here, there's nobody, for two days I didn't see anybody, it was really amazing. Um, okay, on to, on to the next um, point, which is actually about um, the clarity slider. So the clarity, the clarity and dehaze sliders are sliders that people tend to use to make their image look better. And it's like this, um, almost like a really good way of making something have a bit of punch. But the way I see them is that, yeah, you can. On certain images, then it's a really good ex idea to increase the, the clarity. What it does is it gives you just more edge contrast, basically. So it looks at the edges with the images and just gives you more edge contrast there. But, but actually they're really useful for reducing the clarity or reducing the dehaze because you can do really nice ethereal painterly um, photos with them. So this is a good example. This is a woodland scene. So this is with no clarity and dehaze applied. Again, a, a shot that, that's in my woodlands book Copy is still available. I've checked, I've got rid of the clarity and dehaze I put on this. And you could just think, okay, I'm just gonna increase the, the clarity on this and yeah, it adds a bit of punch. But what I like to do in my woodland scenes is reduce the clarity a little bit. So you can see as I'm reducing it, it's just creating a little bit more of an ethereal look to it. And you can see that as I'm just reducing this, I don't wanna go all the way because that looks horrible and muddy, but I just might reduce it by minus 14 and I'm just getting just a nice, just ethereal look to it. Maybe go to about there. And then also dehaze, again, it can add a little bit of glow. So I might, not very much, but I might just wanna reduce the dehaze on that. So this image here, Prima, was a great example of when I reduced clarity and dehaze on an image. So again, it was a very ethereal day already, but I didn't want to add clarity to this. It just looks horrible. It looks just bleh. The clarity is already there in the definition between the snow and the trees. It just looks really good. But if I just reduce clarity a little bit, again, you don't want to do it too much, then it looks great. And again, in this particular one, reducing the dehaze looks so nice. Now you might, when you do that, have to add a bit in, back in the blacks, which you can see I've already done here, but this just looks so nice. It's still got a sharp appearance to it, but now I've got this softer look and that's exactly what I wanted with this image. This image here, um, it has got some clarity. You can see that I added some clarity in this, um, which was really good. But what I have done in this image, you can see on this top bit here, I've reduced the clarity. So I've taken the clarity and reduced it back down so that basically what I do is that I have a, a gradient of clarity throughout my image. So this is really sharp, it was really sharp, I was really close to it and um, there was no atmosphere in the, in the air. But as I went further back, it was softer. So it helps to create depth in the image by controlling and thinking about how you use clarity. So here I've got a little bit of clarity and back here I've got negative clarity. So think about that, think about that when you're uh, editing your images, don't just crank those dehaze and clarity sliders to the right. Sometimes that is good, most of the time I prefer to do it the other way. Okay, let's go back to this shot here, the gathering um, for the final point, which is all about saturation. So um, there's a real temptation on shots like this just to think, okay, it needs a bit more saturation, I'm gonna increase the saturation across the board. But what I've done on this particular image is, and I do on most of my images, is I control the saturation, and you can see I've done a lot of saturation changes here on a color basis. 
So rather than changing the saturation globally, sometimes I'll do it on local adjustments in certain areas, but quite often I'll control the saturation on a color basis. So for instance, in this particular case, you know, increasing the saturation of the green might be a good idea because I just want to pull out those greens and maybe the oranges, but not quite as much as the greens. So I want these oranges to stand back a little bit. I want the greens to pump forward a little bit. And by doing that, by controlling the saturation on a color by color basis, you really have a lot more control in your image and you can create something that just has a little bit more um, oomph to it. And by combining all those elements together, you can really create something quite special. So I hope you've liked it. Once again, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing below. I also wanted to say that um, if you don't follow me on Facebook, I'm starting to publish a lot more on Facebook and the quality of the images there are quite good as well compared to Instagram. So go and check out my images on Facebook and if you're not following me, give me a follow. Um, okay, I just wanted to mention this week's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace of supported this channel for many years now and I'm really grateful for that. It means that I can continue to produce these videos. So if you're looking for a website or a domain, then take a look at Squarespace. I absolutely love it. It really helps me out. And the, the most important thing for me is it just gives me that flexibility to change things that are that were in the past probably a little bit more technical to do. One of the things you find with websites is you set it up and then you never change it again. So for instance, if we just have a look at my site, then you can see here that I've changed the homepage to include um, one of the images from my 2020 calendar, a good plug for my calendar. Um, and I wasn't meaning to do that, by the way. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was really easy to do this. This took me five minutes, probably less. It probably took me longer to work out where the photo was than to actually change all the other things. You know, I've created a link to um, the calendar page. I even added this calendar. And um, yeah, I've got a calendar in, in, in my <laughs> basket as well. Um, obviously gonna buy myself a Christmas present. Anyway, do take a look at Squarespace. And if you're ready to set up a website, then you can get 10% off by using my code, which is www.squarespace.com forward slash Nigel or offer code Nigel. Okay, thanks so much for watching the video. And until next Sunday, bye.